Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 9. It's the Knife series where I get to answer all your questions, whether they're big or small. Today we got some fun stuff to talk about. Got some cool knife recommendations, and we answer that age-old question, what's the difference between men and women? Let's get to it. Before I get to the first question, thank you everyone who has been leaving your questions in the comment section below. I'm having a lot of fun going through them and picking questions to answer for this series. If you want a chance to have your own questions answered, make sure to leave your comments down below. This series really thrives on what you give to us, so show us your A-game. Give, give us some good questions down there. Uh, first one today is from a user named Gert Tarkter, something like that says, what folding knives would you recommend that have substantial hand filling handles for a large hand? I like the look of the Spyderco Shaman, but I'm struggling to find comparable knives. An important factor for me is a handle that is amenable to inverted grips, such as the chest lever cut. Most of the larger hard use knives seem to have grooves and juts on the lower side that make upside down grips somewhat unusable. Uh, yeah, great. Um, so the chest lever grip, um, I'll get to that in a second, but the first thing that I, I thought of, uh, one of my favorite kind of hand filling, uh, harder use knives is the Cold Steel AD-10. Here it is right here. Uh, prices on these are a little bit over 190. You've got a nice S35VN blade, strong Cold Steel triad lock right there. And what makes this a real comfortable handle are these G10 scales. They are nice and contoured over, they're not blocky. So they really nestle in the hand quite nicely. Uh, they do have a pocket clip that's, um, they have two pocket clips actually, one for, for either side. It's even more comfortable if you take that off and want to carry it in like a large pouch. Uh, now the chest lever cut uh, that the Mr. Gert Tarkter, Tractor Tarkter is uh, referring to, uh, the way that works, I, I'm a big fan of that, that cut as well, especially doing, when doing some bushcraft, when you need to do some heavier cuts on wood. You basically take the, the front of the knife here and you point that towards your knuckles and your grip, and then you can anchor that on your chest and use your other hand with, uh, I don't have a stick here, but we'll, we'll pretend my arm's a stick, I just won't actually cut anything. But you can actually uh, you know, anchor that on the other side, and when working together, you can really pull a lot of force into a cut. Uh, we may have some footage uh, for some of the old bushcraft videos I did. So it's a really powerful cut, really important. Um, now it depends on how large your, your hands are, whether this AD-10 is gonna work. My hands are slightly larger nor than average, uh, not super huge, but not you know small either. I've got just enough room on the AD-10. Uh, if I happen to be wearing gloves, which if I'm doing heavier cuts like that in a bushcraft scenario uh, or camping scenario, I probably would be wearing gloves for more comfort. It might get a little cramped for me actually. Um, so I have a couple others here that might also be a good option. Uh, one is the Cold Steel Formax Scout, uh, even larger handle, not as rounded over, not quite as comfortable, but it is a bit more open here at the back. Uh, I know that was a, that's a concern uh, of yours and a concern with that AD-10 as well. A little bit uh, less expensive knife, this is about 110, comes with an AUS-10 blade, almost four inches of reach. And this one definitely feels very comfortable in my hands for a, uh, in a chest lever grip. Uh, but as I'm doing this, I think the, because of this large finger choil here, the edge might be a little far away from the actual uh, place you put your hands to get maximum amount of leverage. Uh, you could maybe choke up a little bit. Um, still a good option, um, but you know, there is that little edge bit to contend with. Um, I'd also recommend you check out a couple of Benchmates. Of course, the, uh, the popular Griptilian series uh, is a great one. Uh, I ne wouldn't necessarily use this knife for a chest lever cut because you've got the, uh, the partial serrations here. Um, but this particular one's about 123. Um, they're a little bit uh, less expensive if you want to go for a, uh, a plain satin blade with no serrations. But the handles on here are lightweight. They do have a good amount of girth to them and they do feel really good in that chest lever cut because it's a very neutral handle shape. It's something I harp on a lot with this design. Uh, so it's not gonna, it, it's not gonna get in the way of your fingers. It, the handle just stays out of the way basically. Uh, for a little heavier duty than that, and I think even more comfortable, at least for me, in a chest lever cut is the new Presidio 2 with the CF Elite uh, carbon fiber reinforced nylon scales. Um, I've showed you guys this knife a lot, I think recently, because I just really like it. It's one of my favorites uh, of 2020 right now. Uh, price on these, still nice and affordable. 
uh, about 131 right now. Just feels good. Uh, another longer blade, about three and three quarters of an inch. Going to be a bit easier to carry than than either of those cold steels in the uh, the standard pocket. You got your deep carry pocket clip there. The handles feel quite nice. You've got full liners on both of those. Excellent all around uh, drop point shape that's gonna work great in the outdoors. And again, I'm assuming you're talking about outdoor stuff since you're talking about a chest lever cut. Great, great option for that sort of thing right there. All right, so this next question, um, it, it's a good point to bring this particular one up because I was talking about hand sizes a little bit right there. Uh, our, our previous questioner, questioner had some pretty, or uh, sounds like he had some pretty large hands. Uh, so this particular co comment actually got caught up in our, uh, our flagged comments filter. Uh, there was some profanity, profanity in it, uh, and we do try to keep a pretty family-friendly channel. So we don't, uh, when we see those, we don't approve them. We, you know, they just kind of go by the wayside. But uh, this gentleman named George Cipher did bring up a point I want to address. And I have cleaned up his comment. Uh, he rambled a bit and was there was a little bit of profanity. I've cleaned that up um, to the, uh, the salient point, if you will. So George Cipher says, I am so tired of hearing about slightly larger than normal style hands. Why must you insist on throwing that catchphrase into every video? Um, yeah, this is definitely something, <laughs> something I've wanted to bring up for a little bit. Um, that was never an intentional catchphrase, quote unquote, actually. Um, it, it's just a point of reference, basically. Uh, when I'm doing these uh, kind of new knife presentations or any kind of knife presentation, uh, I'm trying to give you, the viewer, the most information I can. Uh, what I do is here is it's not really reviewing the knives, I'm presenting them to you. Uh, since for the most part, knives these days are bought online and people don't ever have a chance to actually hold them in their own hands to see how they feel. So the more information I can give you, the viewer, the better informed you are to make your own decision, which is you know what we want really, what's, that's what we aim for on this channel. Um, so since you can't hold it in your hands, it's hard to say. We can give measurements on the website and we do of handle length and stuff like that, but it can be hard to say how it actually feels in the hand. So I'm giving it to you from my perspective. I can't exactly say how well it's gonna fit a small size hands, but I can tell you how it fits my hands and I try to communicate that, uh, that size of my hand to you. Um, and you know, it's not perfect, I admit that. Um, I just haven't really found a better way uh, without getting into like pedantic measures like, oh, my hands are like these many inches. It's not exactly helpful. Um, I also used to try to give like my glove size in terms of a work glove. But depending on the work glove company, it's either a large or an extra large. So that's not exactly helpful either. So that's where that comes from. Um, I didn't even realize, like I was doing it for a while, I didn't even realize I was saying it as much as I was until you kind folks in the comments pointed it out to me, at which point it became kind of funny and became kind of a, a very unintentional catchphrase. So that is why I bring that up. It's not to be funny or smart alecky. It's to give you guys uh, the most information that I can. All right, our next question uh, came on our uh, Gentleman's Knife video that we did uh, earlier this week. Uh, comes from an Ashley Bischoff, uh, probably not a gentleman, guess, guessing by the name. Uh, serious question for David and the other good folks at the Knife Center. Will you also be putting together a video on EDC knives for ladies? Because we like knives too. And I get that you said, and you don't have to be a gentleman to enjoy these on that particular video. But that still puts women as second class citizens since we're not even mentioned in the video's title. Uh, I apologize for that. I certainly didn't mean to exclude anyone uh, from uh, you know taking a look at those good gentlemen's knives. That's just the you know the kind of the recognized industry term for that style of knife is a gentleman's knife. And yes, I guess technically it is a bit sexist. I'm not going to sit there and defend it. Um, but since you know we're trying to uh, to target that demographic, that's what we called the video. Um, but the Onto, onto the meat of your question, uh, I would love to do something like that. Um, but it's a little bit difficult for me, obviously coming from the male perspective, and we actually, we got a ton of males uh, generating our, our content here. Um, so I, I wouldn't really wanna declare these are the knives for women, being as that's not who I am. So I'm gonna throw it to you uh, ladies that are watching this channel. Let us know down in the comments what sort of things you guys look for in a knife, and maybe we can uh, come up with some cool content around some of that. Um, the other hard part with it is uh, just doing a knives for women video is kind of reductive. Um, you know, there's no single best use. Like there's all kinds of different uh, uses, usages and needs on the women's side, just as many as there is on the men's side. And probably a lot of uh, the same things in a lot of cases. So throw me your suggestions down in the comments uh, from the ladies out there or the men. Yeah, shut up for a minute. Let the ladies talk. <laughs> 
Um, I do have one, uh, one knife I'll show you though that uh, it's a frequent re recommendation I like to make to a lot of folks, whether they're men or women, women but I think it works especially well um, if you happen to uh, want to carry, be carrying your knife in a purse. I know a lot of women, uh, my wife certainly complains that a lot of women's clothes don't have pockets. Uh, so that option that I like to show you is the Spyderco Delica. Um, anything with a lock back usually or, uh, or even old school slip joints is what I like to recommend because they're not as likely to, to come open if they're free floating or banging around in a bag. But the Delica is just one of those knives. Uh, there, I've, you may have heard me guys heard me say this before, but the reason I like to recommend it is it works for just about anyone. The blade length is just right, uh, just under three inches, so you don't have to worry about length in most places. It's got a nice slicey grind with that full flat VG10 blade, a bunch of different colors, so you can take something to suit your preference. You can also grab something that's a little less intimidating looking because we do get some nice bright colors. And it's completely ambidextrous with the four position clip, that lock back and the opening hole there. So it just works, just works. Um, and decently affordable too, for about 84 bucks for these base models. And then the sky's the limit on options. If you wanna go all the way to the high end, I've got one of the uh, a customized Santa Fe Stoneworks version right here. That's about 460 bucks right now. And it's got mother of pearl handles on the front stainless steel frame, VG10 blade, not the full flat ground VG10 blade in this case, but that's just a beautiful, beautiful knife and a beautiful piece of pocket jewelry or purse jewelry for anyone out there. Next question, nice short one from Forever Jim. Are there any tip down options with a crossbar lock? Yes, uh, I'm very excited because yes, there is, uh, ask me, maybe a couple months ago, I would have said no, I, I didn't know of any. But the new SIG K320 series from Hogue is the only crossbar locking knife I know of that has tip down carry because we've got a four position, four position deep carry pocket clip on these knives. Uh, they're on their way to us right now. We're expecting them very soon. The one I have here is a pre-production sample. The prices on these are really good. They start at about $127.50 uh, and you can get them with a Tonto or a drop point like this, plain edged uh, or combo edged like this. And the combo edged versions are this uh, tan color and all the plain edged versions are black at this point in time. Really great knife made in the USA. Um, Hoag's Able Lock, which is their name for their crossbar lock, is fantastic. It's super smooth really well tuned out of the box. Benchmade always does a pretty good job, um, but some of theirs I've found do sometimes need a little bit of breaking in right out of the box. Every single Hogue uh, with this lock I've ever pulled out right out of the box has been super, super smooth. But the specs on these knives, you got three and a half inches of blade, uh, S30V steel. Of course, this really nice wide drop point profile here that I really like, uh, or of course the Tonto profile. Synthetic handles that four position pocket clip, like I mentioned. And you've got a full size finger choil here too. So you can choke up behind the edge if you wanna get some, uh, some closer detail work. Uh, that's something a lot of crossbar locking knives uh, yeah, suffer from, for lack of a better word, uh, is the mechanism typically requires a fair bit of space around the pivot that you usually can't use either for edge or handle grip. So this gets around that a little bit. So there's plenty of length there, even for larger hands, whether you're using the choil or if you're choking back here. That pocket clip is deep carry. You've got the nice ridges here that are gonna help you pull it out. And they've even uh, softened the texture on the, uh, the grippy parts of the molded handles here where the pocket clip lands, so it's not gonna shred your pocket up too much. Really cool knives, really excited for them to actually, uh, actually fully get here, but you can get your pre-orders in right now. So one of the reasons I am so excited about these knives finally getting here is it presents a really cool alternative to something like that Benchmade bug out, or bug out, Griptilian. Uh, which I have here. And that's, that's why I picked this particular Griptilian to show you because it kind of matches up with the, uh, the pre-production uh, so SOG, SIG that I've got here. Sorry guys. Really cool. You can see there the dimensions line up very well. Uh, I think the Griptilian has just a hint more sharpened edge because the sharpened edge on these uh, SIGs doesn't start until right in front of this particular nubbin right here, which gives you a little bit of protection when you're choking up in that finger choil. Um, but in terms of uh, overall reach from in front of the handle, those blade lengths are about the same. Handles match up pretty well. This is gonna be a really cool face off at, at some point in the near future. 
All right, next question is from Ryan Watts. He says, hi, David, I'm looking for a folder with ball bearings in the pivot, but not a flipper because they're not permitted where I live. Smoother action, the better for under $100, any wrecks. Yes. Um, so first off, uh, I've got a few budget oriented options and then I've got a, a bit of a nicer option as well. Um, CJRB is really knocking things out of the park on their budget branded stuff. This is the Feldspar. There's two sizes. This is the three and a half inch version, but there's also a three inch version. Comes in just $38 right now. And for that, you get an awful lot. D2 steel, nice stonewashed finish. So it's a good, heavy, uh, hard working type of finish. It's gonna look good for a long time. And of course, with that D2, you've got some good edge retention. Inset liners with a liner lock. G10 handle scales, and they're nice and contoured. So they are, this is a very comfortable knife. And kind of similar uh, to that Griptilian, we've got a very neutral handle shape. So a lot of different hand sizes are gonna work very well. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible. And most importantly, thumb studs with no flipper and ball bearings in the pivot. Really, really good action there. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. And I also like the blade shape on this knife very much as well. Very versatile drop point shape going on, almost a continuous curve to the belly. So you've got some good slicing profile or a good slicing geometry as you move through with the high flat, that high flat grind. But you've still got a very acute tip for doing some piercing and detail work out there when you need to. Now, if you want something a little smaller, like I said, there's a three inch version of that Feldspar, but I also want to bring up the CJRB Rhea. Um, this is another, uh, actually, this is the only size of this knife right now. And I was really impressed when I first held this knife because if we're talking about smooth action, this is a really hard knife to beat in terms of its action. And these just start at 32 bucks uh, with a 12C27 blade. Uh, so you've got a, a really good budget steel there as well. Um, but it's something about, this is a right hand only uh, pocket or pocket knife because the, uh, the way the thumb stud works, but ball bearings in the pivot and the relationship of where the pivot is and where the thumb stud is, it's just perfect. The first time I flicked this out, I thought it was assisted because it just goes. Really nice little shape, uh, just a very small inoffensive folder, three inch blade, as I said, with 12C27. Uh, with some G10 or carbon fiber options, or uh, there is an upgraded Micarta version, which comes with RPM9 steel, which is a powder metallurgy steel actually, but it's a budget powder steel. So that version only comes in at 52 bucks. And it should, uh, according to what they're telling us, uh, get, us uh, get you sort of like D2 types of edge retention, but it's gonna be easier to maintain at the same time. So it's a pretty neat trick to pull off. These also have a deep carry pocket clip. This one, however, is actually a, another pre-production sample. I've got a milled clip here. Um, so just know that that won't be on those particular versions. You've got a nice deep carry option for that. Now, if you want something that's a bit nicer, um, I do have an option here. Uh, it's a knife I really like. It is the Boker Plus Gulo Pro. Comes in right under hundred bucks, 97.50 or 46 at this point in time. Now the materials here, uh, you've got stainless steel on the handles and D2 on the blade. So you're not gonna see a performance upgrade uh, in terms of the edge retention on the steel really, uh, but it's more about what they've been able to do with these materials. They've made it feel a lot more high end than $100. And part of the way they do that uh, is skillfully machining it, but they also keep the cost down with materials a little bit. But it's a great drop point blade shape for EDC, about three and three eighths of an inch long. Blade's not super thin, but you've got a high flat grind there. Um, to compensate a little bit for the, uh, the slight increase of thickness versus some of these. It's a really good uh, kind of compromise between strength and cutting ability. Stainless steel handles, they've been milled on the inside to remove a bit of weight. And you've got ball bearings in this pivot as well. It's a nice blue, uh, nice blue pivot as well as the pocket clip there and the thumb studs. And this is another one that just pops open in a super satisfying, satisfying fashion. Too many Fs in a row. Really cool knife, uh, and I don't even care that those people down there in the comments are already queuing up to tell me it's not worth it. Let me tell you, it's a, it, this knife is definitely worth it. All right, next question is from Jeremy2. He says, what is your most recommended Tonto fixed blade knife and Tonto folding knife? Um, so I have a little bit of a confession to make. I'm not exactly a huge uh, Tonto person, so to say. Um, I certainly see their uses, but it's just never been a, something that I gravitated to. 
Uh, and the other thing you didn't mention is what you want to kind of use the these, these Tontos for, because you can have it on anything from a big fighting knife to a small utility knife. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of my favorites as a non-Tonto lover. Uh, the first is the Cold Steel Mini Tech. Really cool little neck knife. Uh, what are these priced at? Let me see. I have it right over here. We're about 30 bucks for these. So really affordable. Um, but in addition, uh, obviously with a name like Mini Tech, they've designed this sort of as a, uh, a self-defense knife, but I think it makes a great little utility knife as well. We've got Aus 8 steel, so you've got some decent edge performance there. Hollow ground main section here with plenty of straight edge, and then the straight bevel there at the tip, which is flat ground, so for a little, for a little bit more strength, so you have a little more uh, there when you're going to pierce but the knife is still fairly thin so again it's going to slice pretty well it's not like some of some of the big chunky tantos out there that are going for outright strength uh, for the you know their intended missions but in terms of the utility uses that tip there also lets you do some kind of fine chisely type of work because you've got a, essentially a straight edge or a very nearly uh, straight edge let me actually check it here just a tiny tiny hint of curvature to that virtually non-existent but it is there um, but yeah, you can still do that chisely stuff. You've got a good grip because of this kind of sub hilt that's integrated in here. And then of course you got a nice hard uh, uh, Grivex sheath that's gonna hold it quite nicely. Really cool little blades. But that actually brings me uh, to a little point on the blade shape. Um, being able to chisel with this is actually not something that a traditional Tonto would have been able to do. This thing where you have that definitive point there uh, at the transition is more of a Americanized Tonto or a Western style Tonto. So for a larger fixed blade option, I've got a K-Bar here, the modified Tonto K-Bar. Um, that's not the actual name, what is it? Uh, oh yeah, it is, the, the uh, 1266 modified Tonto fixed blade. Um, so it's more, it's a little more like a traditional Tonto, I guess. You don't have that definitive shape there, you've still got the nice straight back, long blade here, eight inches, uh, 80 bucks, so it's 10 bucks an inch for this particular blade. Um, but I just like it. This may not be uh, what most Tonto people are looking for, but I think it's a really cool outdoors knife. Maybe you could do some uh, some types of butchering with this blade because you've got that type of scenario or that type of shape to the edge. Certainly an, an acute point for piercing. Uh, so I know a lot of folks tend to prefer smaller knives when hunting, but if you are a big hunting knife person, maybe this will be your thing. But of course, it's more of a, uh, a combat style of knife being a K-Bar and all. Got your craton handles here as opposed to the stacked leather. Some nice pinch uh, bevels here right behind the hilt so you can get some good alternate grips there. It's just a pretty cool knife. Now as for a folding knife, I've actually only got one Tonto in my rotation and that's the new Benchmade uh, bailout from this year, the new versions with an M4 blade and aluminum handles. There was something about this when I first saw it that just made me wanna pick it up and carry it and I'm glad I did. These are about uh, 212 right now. M4 blade, as I said, you've got a nice coating on there because it's not a stainless steel. Um, but this is kind of a, a blend of Tonto shapes. You've certainly got a little bit of upward curve to the main edge, it's not perfectly straight, as well as a little bit of belly on the, uh, the leading edge as well. And importantly for me, on a lot of my EDC knives, nice thin blade stock. It's essentially a bug out uh, style of blade, just in a Tonto form. So it's still gonna cut well, it's still gonna slice well for what I look for in my EDC. It's got a really nice aluminum handle. It's a definite, definite upgrade over the Grivery versions of the Bailout, or the Bug Out for that matter. Has a nice solid feel to it. You've got that crossbar lock there, Benchmade's axis lock. You can flick it open and close quite easily. And then the bail there at the back, hence the name Bailout, with the integrated glass breaker. It's just a really nice EDC. All right, next question is from Austin Lee. He says, could you do a comparison of the Kaiser Feist and the Civivi Exarch? They seem really similar, but are much differently priced. Sure, I've actually pulled both of the knives out here. Um, I've got them on the table, but I haven't actually, uh, it's been a while since I've actually held these knives, either of them in hand, and I didn't want to uh, do that before I got on video, so I haven't taken them out of the pouches yet. Uh, so this will kind of be a, a live comparison, sort of live, but you know it is going to be cut and edited, edited a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to open these right now and kind of compare them uh, on the fly. So here is the Exarch. Uh, it's about 49.30 right now for this black G10 version front flipper. Not the best at front flippers, you guys know that. Uh, D2 steel on these, 3.2, almost three and a quarter inches. 
nice drop point shape with your hollow grind there. Uh, handles pretty much identical to the Civivi Chronic. You got kind of that coffin shaped, uh, or the octagonal cross section at least, with your deep carry pocket clip and your lanyard point. Really classy little knives uh, and really good price on these, just $49.30, uh, like I said. So that is the Civivi. Let me open up the Kaiser here. So here's one of the, uh, the fancier versions that has a, uh, that carbon fiber handle. You can see the, uh, the sort of shimmer to it there. A Little bit smaller than the Exarch, you can see immediately. Blade length is a little bit uh, shorter as well. We're at 2.8. Let's see, yeah, I can't really pop this one either. That's on me though, guys. Um, 2.83 inches according to our specs, S35VN, stone washed, flat grind. Love it, uh, love that blade shape. Really great uh, little EDC shape. So here we go, I'll hold up the blades next to each other. Pretty big difference uh, when open, even more so than when they're closed, I think. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? I, uh, I tend to prefer a flat grind generally, uh, but on these sizes, I don't know, I might gravitate towards the hollow grind here. Um, both of the edges are nice and thin. The Civivi's edge might be a, a little bit thinner compared to these two. Um, but I do like the stonewash finish on that Feist as well. Um, Justin Lundquist design, by the way. Uh, if you want deep carry, definitely go for the Civivi because the Kaiser here does not have a deep carry clip. It is a milled clip. Um, oh, what's the price on this? 168 as well. I don't know, they're both pretty awesome, you guys. Um, both pretty good gentleman's knife. Um, the Kaiser is definitely a little more impressive. I like the, uh, the crown spine on the Kaiser. It's nice and comfortable and provides a little bit of visual appeal as well. It's just one of those luxury touches. Whereas the Civivi has a, uh, a chamfered edge on the edges of the blade itself rather than a crown spine. Let's see, let's compare inside of the liner locks. Let's see. The fit and finish on the inside of the liner locks isn't super crisp on either of them. They're about the same, but you do have a little more polish on the outside of that Kaiser. But I don't know, what do, what do you folks think down there in the comments? Uh, I'm actually not sure which one I would pick um, over the other. Uh, I take that back. I'd probably go for the Kaiser just because I'm a sucker for a stonewash finish and that really cool, uh, just that layered carbon fiber looks pretty awesome. But let me know, uh, you guys down there in the comments, which, ones you, which one you would take. All right, last question for today comes from Lucas Cornea. He, sa he says, can you recommend me a bushcraft knife that's five inches and is under $100? Sure. Uh, my first inclination was the Condor Bisante. It's a $72 knife with a 4.7 inch blade. So not quite five inches. Um, so if you're looking for something that's, uh, that's at least five inches minimum, maybe a little over, I have another one here in a second. But it's a really nice bushcraft design uh, by a guy named Walter A. Matthews. Nice drop point shape, Scandi grind, 1095 carbon steel, unlike a lot of Condors, which uh, they've used 1075 for years. And you're about uh, just shy of an eighth of an inch thick on the, uh, the width of the blade itself there. So it's a good, a good amount of uh, thickness for enough strength, but it's still not gonna be so thick that that Scandi grind is gonna work against you. You'll still be able to do uh, some more fine, uh, maybe a little bit of food prep if you need to in a pinch. Speaking of pinch, you've got a nice pinch grip here on the wood handles, some red and white liners to spice things up, uh, and a really nice sheath on this as well. It's a square bottom sheath with a dangler here on the back and a fire steel loop. It's got everything uh, a uh, typical bushcraft sheath really needs. Really cool design. But like I said, if you do need at least five inches or more, I have got something here, another thing from Condor. This is called the Wayfinder. Uh, actually a few dollars less. This is just 60, uh, 68 bucks, uh, probably because it doesn't have liners and the sheath is a little bit simpler as well. Just a uh, more traditional sheath with no dangler. So that a uh, few, few dollars saved there as well. But the blade, like I said, uh, 5.3 inches, again, 1095 steel, about the same type of thickness. Uh, so your performance is gonna work well there. Uh, 1095, of course, you'll be able to strike a, a spark off of naturally occurring flint. And if you have a, uh, a man-made ferrocerium rod, the spine is crisp enough where you can throw some sparks with it. Now the blade shape here definitely may look a little unconventional. Um, it's kind of a, a actually in a way it is 
more traditional than some knives. It's kind of a leaf shaped profile, but it feels really good when you choke up on it to do that close work here at the heel of the blade. Feels really good. That's going to work very well. And that tip is fine enough. You're going to be able to, despite the length, control it very well and be able to do some of the fine trap making and the, uh, the triggers and toggles and smaller uh, types of detail cuts uh, that you may need that tip for. It's going to work quite nicely, I think. Rustic finish on the side, simple hardwood handles, like I said, uh, and a few other considerations on this knife that the Basante doesn't have. You do have a divot here on the front. You can use that uh, for a bow drill uh, bearing block. So if you're practicing your, your friction fires and you're doing that bow drill, you'll have a place for your spindle to rotate without uh, needing to find or improvise a bearing block. Now, normally I say uh, with a feature like this, make sure to keep it in the sheath while you're, uh, while you're bearing down on it, just for safety's sake. Um, this one, uh, actually the sheath on this covers up that bearing, uh, that divot. So at least hold it so the edge is facing away from you and your hands over here on the other side of it. Again, be careful. It's also got a scraper here at the back or a protruding pommel that can be used as a scraper, I should say. It's not super crisp, but I, it may, I don't know, it may strike a fire steel. Uh, but you could also use this to scrape out uh, charred things if you're making a spoon or something or you're scraping tinder, that sort of thing. It'll also allow you in a pinch to kind of pound on the back of that with a mallet or a baton if you really need to without damaging the scales. All right, that is all I've got for today's Knife AQ. Thanks to everyone uh, who left us some good questions. But keep them coming, folks. Uh, looking forward to reading what questions you folks have. Make sure to put those below in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the answers today. Let me know what you want to learn. Uh, that's it. Uh, if you want to get your hands on any, any of these cool knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center, and you can get your orders in there. And while you are over there, make sure you do sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to spend your money on one of these cool knives, like I always say, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm Dave. Ugh. He's forgotten his own name. I forgot my name. What, what's my name? I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Thanks for sticking around, everyone. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.